I have always wanted to be a writer. I've always loved stories and storytelling. And ever since I was little, my mum taught me to love books. And as soon as I could, I was often away reading as much as I could. So telling my own, my own stories is something that I was always very interested in. And I'm very excited about my first novel within the ward being released in October. I think a lot of writers have some type of end point in mind for a story. It's really nice if there's some kind of driving force, some final image or um, moment that you are headed towards. But at the same time, I don't want to plan out everything along the way, at least for most of my stories. I like giving them some room to grow organically. And if a story surprises me, then I think that's great because hopefully it means it will surprise someone else too. I think that if you blend together a thousand little pieces of everything, then you end up with something quite different than what you started with. So I'm really interested in books, of course, and the stories that I read are going to impact the kinds of stories that I write. But I also love music and nature and movies and so I think that these things all come together and hopefully um, help me to make something that feels fresh and original. Within the Ward is inspired by a whole lot of different things, um, including The Matrix. And this was a movie that I was absolutely obsessed with when I was about 13. My oldest sister and I just watched it again and again. I once watched it three times in the same day. And um, I think that I was really interested in different realities and what is real and how you can tell and breaking the boundaries of what we consider normal. So this is something that we continue to talk about to this day. And I think that the things that I loved as a younger person, I'll probably always love. Within the Ward is a young adult dystopian novel I think of it as all the bright places meets divergent. It's a little bit like all the bright places because it's about teenagers who are dealing with mental health issues. And it's a little bit like divergent because it's dealing with different realities. And in divergent, they have this really fascinating fear simulation that those in Dauntless go through to try to combat their fears. And in my novel within the ward, I have patients who are in a hospital to deal with mental health issues and they are immersed in a dream reality as a treatment option where they are forced to confront um, representations of depression and these really extreme landscapes. And the journey, which is the name of this dream reality, is something that poses some danger but also... Um, perhaps offers opportunities for them to learn a little bit about themselves. Within the Ward is about 17-year-old Paige Newell who lives in a futuristic society called Raydale. In Raydale, emotions are feared and tightly controlled. Paige has never fit in because she is someone who feels very hard and very vividly. When Paige's best friend dies, she's devastated. She is ready to end it all, but is admitted to a hospital ward where she's immersed in a dream reality to treat her depression. In this dream space, Paige begins to bond with other patients and to discover that there might be more to the hospital than they first thought. Paige and the others must band together and find reasons to live. This is a novel for ages 14 plus because of the subject matter and because of, um, I suppose, the kinds of things that I'm drawing on like Divergent. Within the Ward is a novel that I originally wrote as part of my doctoral studies at the University of the Sunshine Coast. So I began writing this book back in 2015 and I had to do intensive research to make sure that I was um, authentically portraying different experiences of depression. So while everyone experiences mental health a little bit differently, and we all have different brains, um, there were some aspects of depression that I wanted to represent in this book. And so I made a real effort to do this in a respectful and well-researched way. 
this is an issue that matters to me because people in my life have been impacted by mental health issues and I want to destigmatize depression and get people involved in a conversation about it. I also did some research um, as part of my doctorate into something called virtual reality exposure therapy. And I think that this is quite fascinating because this involves confronting um, fears like fear of flying or fear of spiders or even a condition like post-traumatic stress disorder within a virtual space. So this involves wearing goggles or a headset to supplant other images in front of your eyes, um, a little bit like Pokemon Go, where you're looking at a reality that is not really there, but you're engaging with it. And in this virtual reality, they also use sounds and um, a whole lot of things to kind of bring it to life. So for a soldier, say, who is experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder, not only could they replicate something like a bomb explosion where they would see that through the goggles, but they could also have the sound of gunfire or helicopters or something playing through the headset. So this is really interesting because it seems almost a little bit dangerous or counterintuitive to get someone to relive some of their worst moments. And yet the idea is that when you force yourself to confront something, maybe you can develop some type of mental resilience to it. So I saw within this treatment um, option that is a real thing, the potential for something really amazing and the potential for something darker as well. So in a dystopian story, I think that you need light and darkness. And I do try to have both of those feature in my novel with an award, but I want this to be a hopeful tale and I think that it is. I hope that readers will think about hope and how they can try to hold on to it even when things seem to be at their darkest. That's what I want readers to take away from within the ward, that maybe we can't live in a world where everything is perfect or where we are 100% mentally healthy, but we can always hope that things will get better and wait for that to happen. So we can develop strategies to help ourselves and to help to support our friends as well. Matt Haig brings up a really interesting idea in his beautiful book, Reasons to Stay Alive. And that is that no one is really 100% physically healthy. So even someone who is very physically strong and usually in good health might get the occasional headache or have an ankle that clicks or have some type of issue that they're still dealing with. But sometimes when we talk about mental health, it's like we all want to be invincible. So maybe if no one is 100% physically healthy, we shouldn't expect ourselves to be 100% mentally healthy either, but that's okay. We're all human. I teach creative writing at the University of Queensland and I also teach literature studies and academic communication at the Queensland University of Technology College. So I love teaching. I love sharing a passion for literature and writing with students and I find it very rewarding work. My tips for writers would include being persistent and reading as much as you can. So I think that often we find a type of book that we really love and we gobble up as much of that as we can. Um, but sometimes getting out of our comfort zones a little bit too and reading some books that we're not quite as used to can help us to keep on growing as writers and to consider new interesting things to do in our own work. I like writing all kinds of stories. I'm especially interested in stories with a weird bent to them. So some of my favourite books to read include the Harry Potter series, um, Delirium by Lauren Oliver, and the Artemis Fowl series by Owen Colfer, which are hilarious. Um, I do really like to write all kinds of stories. So I write short fiction and poetry, as well as picture books and novels. This is my picture book, The Whirlpool which was published by Wombat Books and illustrated by Helene McGisson. This is a book about a little polar bear who experiences life's highs and lows. 
and it's a story about holding on to hope. I've also written a short story in crossed spaces called Designer Ghost. This one is about technological creatures called ghosts who act as animal companions and um, help to make up for what is seen as someone's deficiency. So for instance, if you struggle with grammar, then you might be given a grammar cat to help you in English at school. And if you're not very good at maths like me, then you could have a maths possum or something like that. So this technological helper follows kids around who are given their ghosts once they turn 13 and they help them to, I guess, become well-adjusted adults. But maybe along the way, they also develop some friends. <laughs> 